In this short video, we're going to take a look at just two other identities that involve binomial coefficients. The first is van der Maan's identity, and that says let m, n, and r be non-negative integers with r not exceeding either m or n, so r is less than m, r is less than n, then m plus n choose r is equal to the summation, as k goes from 0 to r, of m choose r minus k times n choose k. So your textbook has a great combinatorial proof. I'm not going to go through the proof in the textbook. You can certainly look at it, page 442. Um, I'm also not going to do a mathematical proof. I'm really just going to try to help you understand exactly how to understand the identity. So let's think about the fact that on the left-hand side, I've got, let's say, a giant pool full of m plus n of those inflatable balls. On the right-hand side, if you'll notice, I have a summation. And it's important to understand that summation, in this case, would be a rule of sum, right? Rule of sum, when we're dealing with probability theory or enumeration, says that we can add things together if there's just one event occurring. The rule of product, which is also going to come into play because I'm multiplying these two things together, the rule of product says if you have more than one event occurring, and those sound like contradictions because I just said there's one event and then there's more than one event, and uh, they aren't contradictions. So the first thing is let's just forget about the sum for a second. So let's say I've got two smaller pools over here, and this one has M, objects and this one has n objects then it makes perfect sense that if i'm going to choose k i'm going to choose k from the n bucket or pool then i'm going to choose r minus k from the m bucket that that's going to be the same as choosing uh, r from the m plus n pool. Now the question comes from, and of course the multiplication then makes sense because there's more than one event occurring. I'm choosing k and then I'm choosing r minus k from the other pool. So this multiplication makes sense because it's two events occurring. Now is where the rule of sum comes into play because we haven't talked about the fact that this side has a summation and this side does not. And why why does that happen? Well, the rule of sum comes into play because there's different ways that this can occur, and that's where these indices come in. So if k is zero, essentially I'm saying I'm not going to choose any from the n pool, and then I'm going to choose all of r from the m pool. Okay, and then what if k is one? Well, if k is one, I'm going to choose one from here, and I'm going to choose r minus one from here. And so the rule of sum comes into play because I have to take into account all of the different ways that I could choose k objects from here and r minus k objects from here. So hopefully that makes sense in terms of rule of product and then also rule of sum. So that is, again, not a combinatorial proof, not a mathematical proof, just a way to intuitively understand what van der Maan's identity is saying. We do want to look at a resulting corollary. And that comes from when m is equal to n is equal to r. So before I look at what I've uncovered here, let's take a look at m plus n choose r. So m plus n choose r, if I replace m with n and I replace r with n, then it makes sense that I could rewrite that as 2n choose n. Again, only because this is true. m is equal to n is equal to r. The resulting corollary says that 2n choose n is equal to the summation as k goes from 0 to n of n choose k squared. So this is actually a mathematical proof, and I haven't given you the rules or the steps that I used, uh, but I will as I talk about it. So again, using van der Maan's identity, van der Maan's identity says this. So I'm going to have k goes from 0 to n, again, not to r, because we're saying r is the same as n. And then 
n choose k and n choose n minus k. So I've sort of switched the order around and I apologize for that, but it's the same. Now that's using Vandermann's identity. Now I'm going to use another identity and I don't think it really has a name, but we used an identity in our last video, I believe, or maybe the one before last that says n choose n minus k is the same as n choose k. So I've replaced this with n choose k, and now obviously I have two of them. And so therefore I have proved that 2n choose n is in fact equal to the summation as n goes from k to, uh, sorry, k goes from zero to n of n choose k quantity squared. For the second identity or last identity that it uh, talks about in your textbook, again, I'm not going to go through the combinatorial proof because it does a great job in the textbook, well, it does a mediocre job in the textbook of going through the combinatorial proof. But I did want to take you through an example or a way to make this make sense to you um, because I find that it gets a little bit tricky when you start throwing in N's and R's and J's and K's and L's and M's. So let's make sure that this makes sense to us. So on the left-hand side, I have just the math. So I've randomly chosen R to be two and N to be four. So again, to be very clear, this is not a proof. When you show an example, that's not a proof. I'm trying to help you make sense of what this particular identity is saying. And we can see very clearly that the math works out. So let's talk about how we can make it make sense. And we're choosing to use a bit string example. And you're going to see this quite often in this course when we count the number of bit strings. So again, I have chosen R is two and N is four. And so I'm saying I'm going to have a bit string, which is a string of zeros and ones. So a bit string of length N plus one. In this case, that's five. So we're going to look at an example where N is four and therefore N plus one is five. And I'm going to have r plus one ones. So in this case, that's three ones. So you can see in the example on the right that all of my bit strings have exactly three ones. So the question becomes, why would a summation as j goes from r to n of j choose r, why would it make sense that the number of bit strings of length n plus one with r plus one ones why would it equal the summation on the right hand side? And really, this is a matter of cases. So we know if there are r plus one ones, then this value, the very furthest to the right that I could have my last one is in the r plus r plus oneth position. Okay, because if there are r plus one ones, the only way that could happen is if we have ones up to that point, no zeros. So the first case is really that we have r choose r. So why does that make sense? Well, if this guy is a one, then I still have r ones left over and I only have R spaces to the left of that. So this case is R choose R and that's over here in white. So looking at two choose two. Then we think about what happens if it's actually moved to the right one. So again, I've denoted the position where the last one occurs in red. So case one, let me change colors here. Case one was the last one in the R plus one position. Case two, uh, I believe I used blue. So case two is the last one is in the R plus tooth position. Again, denoted in red. 
So how can I denote that? So if this was R choose R, then this is I have R plus one spaces left and R ends, sorry, R ones. That denotes the three plus, or three choose two. Again, I've got R, in this case, two ones left and three positions. And then we look at case three, where the last one is in the R plus threeth position. And so I can see that would be, in this case, the R plus threeth position. So R is two, I add three to that, that's the fifth position. And how can I denote that? Well, again, I've got how many spaces? I have R plus two spaces, and I'm choosing R of them because there's only R ones left because I've used one of the R's here, one of the ones here. And you can see that that would continue and continue and continue. So even though I've chosen a smaller example so that would all fit on one page, we can see that that would continue. So the next one would be R plus three, choose R. And the next one would be R plus four, choose R. So that's how this relationship works. And that's, um, again, showing you that it actually does work, that I have one and then three and then six, which equals 10. And that is the correct total amount. So again, not a proof, just an example and a way to kind of understand strategies that you can use to either understand or prove these. So again, if we wanted to prove this, we would um, just use a proof by cases, um, which is exactly the way that your textbook takes you through on page 443. Coming up next is section 6.5, which is all about permutations and combinations basically on steroids. So we've talked about the general rule for permutations and combinations, and now we want to take a look at what happens when things aren't so simple. We are going to skip over permutations with repetition uh, because there's not a lot to talk about there. I'm going to talk about that when I talk about permutations of indistinguishable objects. So we're gonna go straight to combinations with repetition.